Hi, I'm Dr. Bob Underwood, Chief Medical Officer here at San Juan Regional Medical Center. Today, we're going to talk about a subject that's very near and dear to my heart, and that's leadership. We thought this would be a great subject for you, whether you're a current leader or if you aspire to be in a leadership role. Now, there's lots of definitions out there about what leadership is, yet there continues to be some confusion and debate. So first, we really need to ask the question, what is leadership? And it might help us by defining what leadership is not. Because there are terms out there that people use to define leadership, but they are not necessarily actually talking about leadership. First, leadership is not a position and it is not a title. You would hope that as people get into higher positions, that they are there because they have been and continue to be good leaders. But that is not always the case. So when we say that it's not a title or a position, we're also saying that you can be a good leader no matter what position you hold in an organization. Second, leadership is not management. There's a difference between management and leadership. One of the things that you might hear to differentiate between management and leadership is that managers do things right and leaders do the right things. Unfortunately, this quote tells us a little bit about being a manager, but leaves us a little unsure about it, what it means to be a good leader. Okay, so managers do things right. So management is really about organizing things to make sure that the work gets done. The work of a manager is really about organizing resources. Now, resources can be people, but it's usually also includes equipment, time, physical space, money, supplies, the list goes on. And good managers are very, very important indeed. Now, with that being said, someone could be really good at managing resources and not even have to work with other people. For example, you can manage data or supplies or even money without people even being involved. So with that being said, we can deduce that leadership by comparison must include people. So some, but not all managers work with people, but all leaders do work with people. Now, at this point, it's important to point out that the title manager here at San Juan Regional Medical Center is both a management and a leadership position. And a lot of people have to be good at both managing and leading. So now let's focus on leadership. One of the things that I have found in my years of reading about and researching leadership is that there really is no clear definition of what leadership is. I recently came to the conclusion that defining leadership is like trying to define an emotion. It's hard to explain exactly what it is, but you do recognize it as soon as you see it. And rather than a specific definition of leadership, what we often get when we do research is lots of little pearls of wisdom, anecdotal information, euphemisms, examples, and stories about what good leadership looks like. So with that being said, here's a bunch of examples, and perhaps you'll find insight from some of these examples. Dwight Eisenhower was Supreme Commander of all Allied forces in Europe during World War II, and then he ended up being the 34th President of the United States. Okay, this is a guy who really had some street cred when it came to leadership. And he said that the essence of leadership is to get others to do something because they think you want it done and because they know it's worthwhile doing. Sometimes you'll hear this paraphrased as getting people to do something that you want done because they want to do it. Mother Teresa, she was said to have been a great leader as well. And her leadership characteristics are listed as confidence, caring, and being inspirational. Marcus Aurelius was a Roman emperor who ruled in the second century. And he's often cited as for his great leadership and his philosophies. And although he never really defines what leadership is in and of itself, he does say that a leader should be focused, competitive, selfless, clear, inspiring, courageous, and controlled. Nelson Mandela was a South African anti-apartheid revolutionary. He spent 27 years as a political prisoner, only to later become president of South Africa. I like what he said. He said, a leader is like a shepherd. He stays behind the flock, letting the most nimble go out ahead, whereupon the others will follow, not realizing that all along they are being directed from behind. 
Now I want to get to one of the most inspirational speakers that is currently out there. He focuses a lot on leadership and his name is Simon Sinek. He says that leadership is choosing to look out for the person to your left and to look out to the person to your right. All right. Although I love what Simon Sinek has to say, and I have listened to many of his talks and I have read several of his books. And I think the definition really just doesn't give us much to focus on. If you want to be a good leader, a leader looks out for other people. Okay. I get that. Now, Kevin Cruz is a Forbes business magazine contributor. And I think he has a pretty good definition here. He says that leadership is a process of social influence, which maximizes the efforts of others towards the achievement of a goal. Okay. So notice some of the key elements of his definition here. He said leadership stems from social influence, not from authority or power. I think that that's true. Now authority and power can change the dynamic of leadership. And maybe that's a future podcast we'll talk about. He also goes on to say that leadership requires other people. But this definition also implies that those people do not have to be a leader's direct reports. Notice that there is no mention in this definition of personality traits, attributes, or even titles. And this is because there's lots of styles or pathways to be an effective leader. Leadership styles and personalities might also be something that we'll want to cover in a future broadcast. So finally, this description also includes the achievement of a goal. So leadership is directional towards a specific outcome. Now that covered a lot of the bases. As you can see, there's no lack of information out there about leadership. All of these, I believe, provide at least some sound pieces of wisdom. Here's a definition that I like to use. And in fact, I use it in my book. It focuses specifically on leadership within organizations. And here it is. Leadership is the process of modeling personal values while influencing and energizing people to embrace change by providing purpose, vision, direction, and motivation while operating to accomplish the mission and improve the organization. Okay. So that one's a little bit long. So let's break it down. When we talk about leadership, really, we're talking about three primary things, influence, operate, that's a goal or an outcome, improve another goal or an outcome. So it's influencing people to accomplish a mission, and improve the organization. But how do you influence people? You provide them with purpose. You provide them with vision. You provide them with direction, motivation, inspiration. There are a couple of other key elements of this definition that I like to use that are worth pointing out. First, specifically, I call out modeling personal values. This specific component is very important for effective leadership. Now, we could talk about this one also in a future po podcast because it has somewhat of an in-depth explanation, but suffice it to say at this point, all leadership must be firmly grounded on your personal values. The other component that I bring up in this definition that wasn't included in any of the other things that we talked about, but I believe it's really important. And that is the concept of change when there's no change, but only consistency that really is more of an issue of management. Management likes predictable outcomes. It likes putting resources in specific places. So there's consistent quality output that is predictable. Leadership, on the other hand, usually involves some level of change to human behavior. Remember earlier, I said that management was very, very important. We have to have good, consistent management in order to accomplish what we do every day. Change, on the other hand, is how we go about improving, improving our processes, improving ourselves, improving our outcomes, improving our teams and improving our organization. The leadership cannot exist without good management. Likewise, management needs leadership to help define and drive towards our new processes. But there's a constant dynamic tension between leadership and management, between change and consistency. And again, this may be a talk for another time. Now, earlier I talked about Simon Sinek. He said that leadership was looking out for people and that's definitely a big part of it. He also says in some of his talks that leadership is not about being in charge, but it's looking out for the people in your charge. Often that's about compassion is about caring, empathy, and always about your values. 
I also talked earlier about emotions. I said that leadership is hard to define as it is hard to define emotions, but leadership has another similarity to emotion. Like emotion, leadership can become part of you. As you look out for those in your charge, you become emotionally invested in the process with the outcomes and with your team. With that being said, leadership can be very rewarding, but it can also be very heartbreaking, as can be anything that you really care a lot about. So are you a leader, whether you're in a leadership position or not? Do you aspire to be a leader? No matter what position you hold or whether or not you hold a leadership title, do you want to learn more about leadership? We're really working hard to change and improve how we go about leadership development here at San Juan Regional Medical Center. We're working towards developing a new platform, which will include a tiered leadership development program and a management training pathway. We're looking forward to launching this later this year. If you aspire to become a leader, or if you want to continue to develop your leadership skills, let your supervisor know so that you can move along this pathway. And in the meantime, don't stop learning. Read stories. Read stories about great leaders. Watch videos based on leadership principles. Listen to podcasts about leadership. The resources are limitless, and all you have to do is look for them. Thanks for listening, and I hope this podcast inspires you to go further along your leadership journey.